this question speaks to that. And it's, what insight can you share for the young visionaries, rich in passion and talent, in seeking to honor their calling, yet struggling to find sustainability and support within an incompatible society for their craft? I want to speak to that. I wanted to tell you how this man works, okay? He is uh, always many, many ideas, and he honors them. He honors his ideas. That's the thing to do. He honors them in books, in journals. He's had journals, you know, since the beginning, you know, and they're, they have chosen a size and a style of journal so that he can go back to them. And he does go back to them for this piece that you see in the other room that he did with Mars One. It started with some drawings that he did in the 90s. We went back and I went down to Brooklyn and I got these books. Anyway, the ideas are things that you can go back to, but by honoring them, he has more ideas. So he continually is very imaginative and he notates his ideas. That's number one. The other thing is he's uncompromising drives everyone crazy, including himself, but he is not going to be satisfied. It's a really important thing to keep that creative dissonance. Isn't that what we call it? It's like always a little bit on the edge of not quite good enough, you know? So you've got to do more, more than you thought you did. I mean, I see a lot of visionary artists who don't go far enough, and I think, that's the thing. You just have to be more, think more, read more, look at other people's work more, you know, look at your own work more, and make it a practice. And that's why we talk about art as a spiritual practice. Mm -hmm. uh, that is three things. Well, four, really. It's time, making time for your practice. If you didn't have time for your practice, if you were doing a meditation practice, you wouldn't do it. You know, well, sometimes we call meditate. No, you have to have a time. So have a time for your art practice. Uh, and it should be, a practice would be more than once a week. It would be twice, three times, or every day. Or you just, you know. Okay, so then there's a space, time and space. You've got to have a space for your practice. You have to have a place where you can make things. And you have to be able to leave things there so that you don't have to clean them up every time you want to walk away from them. You, you have to be able to go walk right into your space and make your space as nice as you can and as attractive as you can because you want to be attracted to going there. You don't want it to be in some dark, damp basement that smells bad with no light and you don't want to go there. You want, although I started painting in the attic with no light in my parents' house. I was in the basement. And you were in the basement. So, yeah. You do what you can, but you made your place really nice. And it, people used to come and visit you down there and play their guitars while you were playing. It's no different anymore all these years later. But anyway, yes, you find a place for your art and you make it nice. If you need to have music, have music. If you need to have television or computer, have computer. We have our computers next to us all the time when we're painting. Because you never know when you might have to look up something. so Or have some entertainment or whatever. So make it a fun experience but go go deeply and make it regular so that's time and space then there's the materials you got to have materials if you're going to be an artist so you've got to pick the materials that you want to use and you just have to go and and see what attracts you you may find that you're attracted to other people's art made with certain materials or you may find that you're attracted to the imagery and you or, or you go to the art supply store and something just calls you so anyway figure that out you got to figure out what you're going to use so, and then the fourth and most important thing, Alex always says, is... Subject. Subject. You know, it's like the, uh, Barnett Newman really uh, pointed it out, and he was a really spare, abstract uh, painter, and... Uh, what did he say? Well, he said that the most important thing for any artist is uh, knowing what they're making their art about. Well, Mark Rothko and, uh, said... There is no such thing as great painting about nothing. Yeah. So, your and subject. Exactly. And so, uh, it will be the kind of uh, grit in your oyster that 
yields the pearl and things, and uh, the set of uh, themes that you're obsessed with that really feel like you could devote the rest of your life, maybe many lifetimes, to study. You know, it's something you love. You know, and if you base it all about you, your feelings that you love this subject, this is something you're you're uh, totally uh, uh, directed toward, and uh, it will sustain you. Because the, the idea is uh, not for the art necessarily to pay your bills. There's no telling that that's going to happen. You know, you have to go into it without uh, the expectations that you're for sure going to make your lifetime. Uh, uh, so you got to, in the beginning, I mean, I, I think was in my 40s and when I stopped, uh, doing uh, outside work, and but I, I think it would compromise. It can compromise your work if you are. It can if you are devoted to that as a possibility. You can yeah. actually be a lot freer and more imaginative, and really be more original if you don't keep that, hold that as you're. You're, you're freer. So, like we always say that you know most creative people except really wealthy ones that just grew up wealthy, I suppose, and that's great if they can have that kind of support, all the better. Make yeah, great yeah. art, go Do for it. it. Yes. Use that money for the good, because Whatever it's for the benefit you of all such beings. Yeah. But many of us have to ride more than one horse. We have to have a job job, we have to make money, and we have to also make our art. And we have to know that our art is who we are, and the job is what we do to survive. But you try to make that job like as close to your art world as you can because you could really learn things. So we've always had, when we had jobs, we learned things. And Alex was a funhouse painter <laughs> at 19. And then he was a billboard painter. And then he cut mats. I mean, he cuts a mean mat. He knew how to cut a mat and frame. I mean, Photography, you know, these things are really important. You do what you can, and you to keep your job job as close to your art. My, my way of, of making a living while I was being a painter was always to organize things. I was always an organizer of events. So I worked for art organizations organizing art events, and I learned a lot. I'd organize events about things I wanted to learn about, <laughs> you know, I, you know, workshops and things like that for the organizations that I worked for, and I learned an incredible amount. So that's what you want to do. You want to go into a job where you can learn. Some people become a studio assistant. I just saw that Gerhard Richter movie. Yeah. Um, but that's great. We have a stu we have studio assistants here. Right. But, uh, right. And uh, so you know, you have to have your art and keep making your art. That's on right. The side. You can't stop. And, uh, and you find, you know, study with other uh, people, but keep journals yourself. And because uh, it's a personal journey. And if it's not, uh, you know, every, every artist, uh, even if their genre is uh, shared, has a unique uh, path uh, to their vision. And you sort of, uh, the, the visionary artists are really, uh, uh, those that are listening and looking at their own uh, inner world. And so they may resemble each other in some ways, uh, and that that's a great uh, acknowledgement that we're, uh, we share many universal uh, uh, kind of form constants, you know, in our, in our creative imagination. Yes, we do. But, uh, that, that uh, make visionary art visionary art. Yeah, exactly. And we, we talk a lot about this in our workshops, and I just was going to say, if I were to say one thing to the visionary artists out there, I would say, take a workshop with us. Come and be with us. Come and show us your art and, uh, you know, and, and all the visionary artists that, that, that come to our workshops. It's not really us that teach it. It's just it's a context for visionary artists to get together, and you can learn a lot from each other. So we have them, and I would recommend them. I think that they bring artists to a new level in their work uh, without uh, question. I mean, we have so many people that come back because they feel that you know they, they learn something there, and, and so you study. You study with your sangha. You know, you know the, the Buddha, the Dharma, the sangha, mm -hmm. all the sangha is your community, 
and it's visionary artists, our community gets together, the Love Tribe, all over the world, but at our workshops we make art, visionary art together, so that's, I mean, it's a plug, but it's... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, it's open, well, hard to so miss. many of the great visionary artists that you, we know today, right. We knew first. I'm just telling you, they were in our workshops. I mean, Carrie Thompson and Luke Brown, and you know, and and Amanda and all these people. So we love meeting people. Yeah. We love meeting the young, upcoming, wonderful people. So they're great, great to have art together. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're. Uh, I think it is a unique and mostly underground kind of uh, art world. And uh, that attests to the vitality of it. You, you have to be able to uh, do it because you love it and not because of money. And uh, with, with a bit of luck and uh, you know, good connections and, and hard work, uh, there are many, I think, visionary artists who are uh, supporting themselves. And so it's all, it is a possibility. And, uh, it's just that I wouldn't look to it as, you know, a, a great way to make a living or something like that. You <laughs> sure. know, right? because you love it. Do it but because you exactly. just can't do it because you can't do anything else better you than that. That's the thing it. that you do best or feel the best doing. Yeah. It's just, we couldn't stop. It's just, in this, you know, I tried to stop once for about a minute. <laughs> I thought, well, maybe I'll just be an arts administrator. I could like work my way up into a big museum or something. Uh, no, I gotta be a painter. You got pretty cranky. I know. I didn't <laughs> know. It's not my identity. You know, my identity is that I'm an artist. We always we were born artists. I know, right? and depressed. We were recognized in nursery school as artists, and we yeah. just stayed artists always, and it, it uplifts us. Yeah. From yeah. Depression. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It, it takes us out of our negative states. It's a they healing are. thing. It really is know. healing, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>